Hello, everyone. Today, I decided to offer this transmission because a lot of people come to ask me different questions about the difference between awakening, enlightenment. Sometimes they say that they take initiations from different people who, let's say, claim to be out of Siddha lineage or something like that. So I'll offer uh, a perspective here, which might not be accepted. I would also recommend everyone to watch a video, which I will attach at the end of this transmission. So the most important is to realize that uh, oftentimes we get deluded by words, by concepts, by different kinds of, um, you know, aspects that are presented as something as a different phenomena. So uh, true spirituality, which doesn't need any names or tags, and I've spoken about it numerous times, um, is not based on concepts, it's based on direct experience. And everything is very simple. As long as you are deluded, as long as you are thinking that uh, something is an achievement, an experience is an achievement. You are deluded and you're deluding others. Now, in terms of Siddha lineages, Siddha presence on this earth at this point of time and different supposedly gurus representing, there are no, no such beings and authorized beings at least. So that's why I refer you to the video uh, recorded um, July last year which will give you more clarity on what is going to happen to all those who are claiming themselves to be something. Most of these people are self-proclaimed gurus, charlatans, who have no idea and consider some kind of transitor experience, be it out of the body experience, be it <clears throat> some kind of uh, blissful sensations or even permanent bliss as an achievement. It is not an achievement. Yes, the awakening, the experience of one's natural being, which is blissful, is a first step and will always be, be such. It is a moment of awakening or enlightenment, whichever way you choose to call it, samadhi, and it may continue. But as long as there is no alignment in the body, as long as your body is rotting alive, as long as your body is sick, and someone asked me about previous gurus of some older times, well, for the past six, 7,000 years, we've been deluded, we've been uh, worshipping different spirits and under control of those entities, or spiritual entities. Very often, these people who proclaim themselves to be gurus, to be healers, and so on, are in the hands or are controlled by these entities. They do not know the origin of their power. Therefore, they are just channels. There's a big difference between being a channel, uh, being possessed by something uh, and spreading that energy or being the entity. So uh, the real evolution happens when you are uh, yourself a spiritual being rather than you are a channel of something or you get possessed from time to time and people perceive you as something holy or having some supernatural gifts. Lots of people may possess uh, intuitive talents, supernatural gifts, but they're not aligned. And so there is very big difference between a truly aligned being who understands that bliss and meditative state or blissful absorption or high vibrational state, whichever, one, whichever way you choose to name it, is the tool for self-refinement, the refinement of their uh, corrupt patterns, the patterns of their bloodlines, that genetic material they borrowed through those bloodlines that they, they came through or their body appeared through. And so if they understand it to that depth, they are on the right path. And yet being on the right path doesn't mean uh, having actually any kind of success in the process of alignment because it's extremely difficult, ex extremely challenging process. And therefore only few beings on this earth have ever achieved this at this point of time, which is the lowest point of the cycle, these yugas that we've been uh, talking about, which is the past six and a half thousand years. Now the Siddha presence on earth is, it's a consciousness and most of the people cannot vibrate because if they were to 
experience that type of consciousness, they would experience severe fear unless they surrender and emanate love and connect through the lowest frequency, which is the highest on earth, but the lowest for the sitters, which is the frequency of unconditional love. If there is no such connection, there will be uh, fear, there will be anger, there will be irritation. And so when we want to awaken, we want to tap into, connect to the creative, but the creative, the creation itself, can be only experienced through the guru. Guru means the higher consciousness. If that awakening within oneself does not happen, one cannot realize the depth of creation. And creation itself is the primordial fire, is that, that rough kind of um, energy that shatters all the illusions. Now, in terms of spiritually evolved teachers or charlatans, whichever way you want to call them, and I understand that you know, many of you may find this very uh, uh, irritating because you're looking for unicorns and uh, uh, different types of uh, spiritual illusions or multidimensional illusions. But uh, if you want to really understand what awakening and enlightenment is, it's the process of disillusionment, it's the process of becoming free. And it's not, when I say freedom, many people understand promiscuity, indulging in drugs, being free maybe from pains or being free from some kind of emotional, mental constraints, which is a part of this process of freeing yourself. But the real freedom is, it's, it's a freedom of being free. Free, freely expressive or fee, being able to express yourself freely, being able to be authentic at all times, being able to flow, being flexible, being courageous, being on a higher level uh, of vibration, uh, which can create a lot of disillusionment moments for many people around. But again, it doesn't mean that that person is a chosen, most probably this people who Ever will experience that level of freedom they'll be very flexible they'll be very courageous they'll be the truth emanated and as long as you are thinking that you are enlightened as long as you are thinking that bliss is a sign of enlightenment as long as you are thinking that anything defines you or want to be anything you are dreaming enlightenment is freedom from everything and enlightenment is not the end goal it's the beginning because when you are free from that, those constraints of man-made reality, from the human context, from all the fears, from all the emotional, mental constraints, you start perceiving creation directly. You start learning about creation. And the point of this life is to learn about creation, to be balanced in this world, to be aligned so that th that freedom of your consciousness is aligned with the body and the body starts emanating. When you're doing the work, you are freeing yourself on the level of the body as well. Once the subtle work is done, the physical emanation and the physical, of course, work, there will be alignment, there will be emanation, there will be glow, there will be effulgence, undescribable. We don't have such reference points. People may uh, come and go. Every night, they can exit the body consciously if they know how, and they can enter. People enter Mahasamadhi, but they are not aligned. They can exit voluntarily at a certain time. It's not a sign of evolution. It's not a sign of any spiritual progress. None of this is a sign of progress. Being in bliss, continuously bathing. Well, junkies bathing in bliss and losing their body, their vital substance. Uh, spiritually speaking, uh, you are meditating continuously, but your, bod your body is uh, misaligned. Your whole life is chaotic. You, you're not able to uh, feel grounded. You're not uh, paying your bills. You're not grounded in the system. Alignment means uh, alignment on all levels, freedom from denial, accepting, being on all levels, the flexibility. It's like you've got a range. You can be on the first floor and you can be on the hundredth floor. Most of the people can be only on the first, second, and third floor. 
Now, the more your range is, the more you are aligned, or the more you are aligned, the more access you have to higher frequency being. And the more you are aligned with the body, the more you realize what yoga is. This is yoga. The first yoga you experience anytime everyone experiences yoga or moments of awakening when they're just in an absorbed state. We can experience absorption for a second, for 10 minutes, for 50 minutes. But once we come out, we don't realize that that was the moment when we're supposed to align ourselves. We're supposed to let go and see no, first we're supposed to see the negative patterns and then we're supposed to release them, let go. We have to spot through these moments when we get absorbed and blissful and when we come out of this absorption and blissful state. What is taking us out? When we are interacting with people, why are we running away from life? Life is who we are. We are life. When we choose death, we deny life and that's why we die prematurely. When we choose life, we're blissful naturally, but we learn to, un to realize and let go of that which is transitory and which is keeping us uh, in bondage. And bondage means we are leaking out. We are draining ourselves. And that's why our body becomes possessed by all kinds of parasitic energy on the physical, emotional, mental levels, intellectual levels, spiritual levels. So we are full of parasites on all levels and no one is speaking about it because no one understands that. You're giving initiations and Shaktipat, who are you? Are you that presence? Are you that alignment? Look at your body, it's diseased and corrupt. Work on the body, become truthful, become authentic, release all these things. Being in blissful state mentally but rotting alive is not yoga, is not alignment, and has never been. All these corrupt ideas creeped into spirituality simply because of corrupt teachers and gurus and beings who have no idea what they were doing. They were just repeating the old truths, and they ended up being consumed by time. The proof is in the pudding. See all your meditation, all your spiritual curriculum, where did it lead you? Always look at end result. Never look at anything else but the end result. Where did it take you? All your philosophies, all your book readings, all your visitations to pseudo gurus and spiritualists and occultists, where did it get you? What is the end result? If you are rotting alive, if you are in pain, if you are corrupt, if your life is imbalanced on any level, that is your end result. And start from there. Awaken. Awakening is disillusionment. Awakening is seeing reality for what it is. And that reality, is, first of all, st starts from within you, how you are now. That's all that matters. Who are you now as an emanation, as a frequency? Not whom you want to be. Who you are now defines your presence and is your presence. And if your presence is corrupt, if you connect to other people, to all those pseudo teachers and, and charlatans because of your corruption and trauma, and they propel that trauma by, by validating you, by, by patting you on the head, there is no progress in that. Progress starts from within and ends within. And all your different experiences all these people who could exit the body, enter the body, who had all kinds of supernatural experiences, communication with supernatural entities, most probably they are the, the, the channels of those and these entities control them. There is no spirituality. When I say demonic spirituality, every spiritual entity that controls people or uh, clusters of people is feeding of these people and is alive because of these people's consciousness. There is no evolution and any kind of progress through these demonic worshippers. And these entities can be benevolent or malevolent. They are the same entities. If they are expressed or um, experienced as malevolent, they would be known as demonic. Or if they're benevolent, they can be seen as angelic, although they are one and the same thing. They are all natu natural forces of the natural world, which are in control of this creation. And people who connect to them 
only think because they're lacking high awareness. They think that they're controlling through mantras, through rituals. In reality, they are controlled and they will be consumed at the end by these forces, or they will be insulated by these forces and controlled by these forces. In order to really ascend from this uh, level of creation, you need to realize your own spiritual might. But before you realize that, you have to connect to it, you have to awaken, and this is your first yoga. When you connect, that's where you experience blissful absorption. Meditation, that's your natural state. But it doesn't mean anything because you have to heal through it. You have to release all the corrupt patterns. You have to disillusion yourself. Your mind has to become flexible, neither denying nor accepting fully. Seeing things for what they are, neither believing nor disbelieving, neither rejecting nor pursuing or being fanatical and flowing. The more flexible you become, the more aligned you are, the more healed you may be considered. But where is the standard? Who has that reference point? There is no reference point because there are no such people who can show the example. There are very, very few. Siddha consciousness shatters everything. Whoever claims that they are representations of Siddha consciousness within the next coming years will be shattered and destroyed because they assumed, do not assume, either you are or you are not. The proof is in the pudding. Your body is the fruit, your consciousness is the root. If the consciousness is corrupt, the fruit will be rotting and perishing, the consumed by time. It will be challenging, but it's still possible. And it's possible only when you face life courageously, honestly, and with love. Love is not the emotional love. It's the love of being, love to creation to existence, because you cherish that love and life, which is one and the same thing. Life, love, time, energy, one and the same thing. That is the primordial force that is allowing one to perfect oneself. Once you perfect yourself on all levels, you may say, I have connected to the Siddha reality. I am attempting to grow in humility, with courage and love. Otherwise, it's all pseudo. There is nothing of Siddha. There is nothing of presence. There is nothing of evolution. Some people tell me that they go and visit different gurus and there is blissful state. Subtle entities may produce this blissful state. Once you leave, you're not able to produce this blissful state. You have to cultivate that within. It doesn't matter who invokes what. Who are you every moment? Are you able to align yourself? That's the challenge. So take this as a challenge. Start with your body. Free your body from parasites. Free your mind from parasites. Free your mind from parasitic emotional energies and intellectual corrupt concepts, religious concepts, ideologies and belief systems. Once you're free, you will experience that freedom, freedom of expressions, freedom of being, which is very rare. It's the freedom of being free from all those that you consider as freedom in terms of current reality, man-made reality, all your psychedelics, all your shrooms, all your music, all your binaural frequencies, and all these things are external projections. They are not going to make you grow. They're going to make you deluded and codependent and will destroy your body, will destroy life from within because you're looking for something outside of self, forgetting that you are to face your trauma. You are to face your ancestral heritage in order to really align, refine, and appear, emerge as an emanation of that refinement, the perfected being, where the body is the fruit, where the body is the proof of your spiritual growth and alignment. And hopefully this message is received by people who really look for real evolution, 
for real growth, regardless which path they follow externally, regardless what they read or didn't read, regardless which gurus or pseudo gurus or charlatans or cultists you met or didn't meet. It doesn't matter. Whatever reminds you of your higher being, whatever connects you with that, that is the truth. Today, that is your truth. Tomorrow, the more you refine, the deeper you will be aligned with the truth. And the more you're aligned with the truth, the more this truth will emanate through your body, through your physical vehicle. Thank you very much for your attention. Many blessings to you all. Be clear. Clarity is the blessing. Flexibility of mind is the blessing. And inner freedom is the blessing of that awakening. And the result, the fruit, through which you can grow further because the growth, the evolution are eternal. They are beyond this human mainland reality. They are beyond this natural world. Creation is multidimensional. So don't be deluded by this world, but be in this world fully, freely aligned. Thank you.